Wall Street Memes Casino. I'm fine. And Sportsbook. This is Coogan Cassius for IFL TV. What the Eddie's fuck are you doing? Back again. Eddie's back. Tell your friends. Guess who's back? Guess who's back? Guess who's back? I created a monster. No. All right, Sam. Weird geezer you are. All right, mate? Yo, I'm buzzing, boy. Yeah, I didn't even really speak to you after the fight. It's like... It all happened, and then what a weekend? What a week! Um, you've got to sort them timings out, though. Bit late, wasn't it? Half four in the morning. Left there at seven o'clock in the morning. I know. Yeah, it was probably an hour later than expected. Really. Um, we wanted to get the main event in around eleven p.m. UK. Ended up being what midnight. So, yeah, a lot of fights on the card. Different kind of experience, but, but, a night, a performance that sent shockwaves around the world as the number one heavyweight on the planet displayed ferocity, superstardom, knockout. I mean, some say knockout of the year. I say knockout since the birth of boxing. Um, and yeah. Absolutely buzzing. Proper company man you are, aren't you? <laughs> Comments like that. <laughs> Me um, and Johnny Nelson. You and Johnny Nelson. Look, look, one thing I do want to address from the start, obviously, obviously, being on the ground in Saudi and speaking to multiple people during the week, a lot of people, let me get the comments right, Joshua on points, tight decision for Joshua, a lot of problems for Joshua, etc., etc., now he's dispatched of him in emphatic fashion. Certain people, I've seen over the last... Well, it's what he's supposed to do. It's what Tyson Fury should have done. I mean, yes, correct. I actually watched... I nearly... Re- WBC last night put out a post. They're doing, like, these crossover fight posts. And they put up a couple of minutes of highlights of the Fury and Garnu fight. I actually reposted it because I found it really fascinating. But then I took it down because I thought, I can't be bothered with people going, oh, look, he's having a dig, he's doing this. And I'm just saying, he was super competitive in that fight. I thought he won the fight, but whatever, it doesn't matter now. But actually, when you look at how he boxed in that fight and how he shaped up in the first round of that fight against AJ, the geezer's a problem, right? He's an absolute monster. Now, I'm not... uh, But I said all along, I said on Ariel's show, this is after Fury. AJ will destroy this guy in a couple of rounds. And, but as the fight got closer and I started being around and Garnu and just, I just thought, fuck, this is going to be a hard night's work. And then I spoke to Fury who said he hit him with the kitchen sink, right hand after right hand, didn't budge him once. This guy's got a number. I'm thinking, we just, are we going to get through this guy early? So I didn't even predict what happened really i thought we'd stop him but i thought it might come a bit later on so yeah you're gonna get the guys oh it's in oh or oh, he dropped his left hand on the last knockout i mean not because he was completely concut i mean just battered but what about the way aj set it up what about how he set everything up you know and gone just switches southpaw for a second bang right hand down the bottom i mean like it was a great performance Great performance. And it was just a performance. Like I was actually saying today, the comeback from Anthony Joshua is just unbelievable. I'm talking about the mental comeback. I'm talking about the comeback from criticism. I'm talking about the comeback to form. Like this guy, you've got people like Thomas Derek Hauser, right? Derek? Saying, yeah. There's no... No, but it's Derek's just like, you know, Derek. It's just Oh, like you know, a Derek. Yeah, like a Derek. Right, who Derek. says a year ago, oh, AJ should retire. I mean, like, I think he's taking, you know, a lot of damage and it's like shit. And now, what about now? Derek, should he should he retire now? Or is he the best heavyweight in the world? It's one out of two. So what this guy has done to come back to the position he is, honestly, unbelievable. 
like a broken man after the U62 fire, searching for answers, searching for form. Search, and he has worked so hard to find it. He's never stopped trying. He's never stopped believing. He's never stopped working. He's a, he's a fucking hell of a boy, AJ. I'm telling you, a hell of a boy. Eddie, can I just say one thing, yeah? And I, I share your enthusiasm to a certain degree, yeah, about AJ, because I'm an AJ fan. But you saying that AJ's the best heavyweight on the planet right now, yeah? But what, so where do you sit? Alexander Usyk, who's beaten twice, and also Tyson Fury as well. So, on from performances, Usyk, in my opinion, Usyk is number one. I actually said a couple of weeks ago, I think Fury is number one. But I actually changed my mind now because the two wins over Anthony Joshua, in my opinion, put him as number one. But whatever, one of those two. I can't say that victory over Franklin and Hellenius and Wilder and Garner who puts him above Usyk because Usyk beat him twice. I'm just saying, in my opinion, right now, he is the best heavyweight on the planet, right now. He needs to beat those guys. But that's just my opinion of where he's at right now. And I'm, I just, I've always believed he beats Fury. But right now, I cannot see anything but victory over Tyson Fury. And Ben Davison, those guys, are so convinced they beat Alexander Usyk in this form. But, of course, he's beaten him twice. So, But in my opinion, right now, he is the best heavyweight in the world. Okay. Well, you're entitled to your opinion, obviously. That's very kind of you. Thank no, you very no. much. What, like everybody else? Are they entitled to their opinion as well? Everyone's entitled to say what they want to say, mate. It's a free world. So I will say whatever the fuck I want to say, which is AJ is the best heavyweight in the world. Now... I've got believers. People believe. If you put a poll out right now, who wins Tyson Fury, Anthony Joshua? I reckon it'd be 50-50 or even 60-40 to AJ. Yeah, but if I put it out today, correct. If I put it out in two weeks' time, it should maybe be different. Oh, really? They, neither of them would have fought. No, because this is what people do. They get off the back of a performance. They get almost carried away with that last performance and then their opinion sways towards that. That is true, what I just said. I'm not trying to burst your bubble, but I'm just saying, when... <laughs> My bubble is unburstable. That's good to hear. <laughs> Absolutely good to hear. Um, <laughs> the show as a whole, though, pleased with it? Well, it was a great show. I mean, Puni Lorena, great heavyweight fight. Obviously, Chamberlain Gwynn. Disappointing with the, the injury, but still a good fight. Um, Madrimov, I thought, was sensational. Ray Vargas, Nick Ball, I thought Nick Ball was very unlucky not to win the world title. How did you honest. score that? I thought he won it by two rounds, yeah. by two points. Yeah. I mean, Vargas just didn't do anything. Like, for the second half of the fight particularly, he just ran. And, um, you know, the two knockdowns were massive. And when he got the knockdown in the final round, I was just thought... He has to have won this fight. Zhang Parker was okay. It was, like, it was interesting, but it was a bit of a weird one, really, because Zhang got the two knockdowns and just kind of took his foot off the gas. And Joseph just stuck in there and kept winning rounds, kept winning rounds. And I thought the decision was definitely right. I thought he deserved to nick the fight. And then, obviously, AJ was just sensation. I mean, I've never seen a place light up like that before. And, and I've never seen so many faces at ringside going like this. Because how brutal was that knockout? Brutal. It, it definitely was a, a show real knockout from Joshua. What what would you have changed from the other day if you could as a show? I know it wasn't technically your show because you're playing kind of co-feature on Look, everything. Is, Frank. Every, it's nobody's show apart from his excellencies, in all honesty. Like we're all <laughs> living in this world, yes. Matrim and Queensbury show, whatever, like, but the, the decisions for the show, the card, the structure, the timings, everything comes from really His Excellency's team. So I do think that in an ideal world, it would have been a little bit earlier, the main event. Yeah. Um, you know, but 
there's a lot to take care of on the night and there's a lot happening and there's a lot of arrivals and, you know, um, but I thought on the whole, it was an amazing week, amazing experience. I mean, we were very lucky to do the snooker there as well, which was a huge success. Um, and I'm looking forward to going back there on May the 18th. Obviously, I can't wait to watch Fury Usyk. Cannot wait to watch that fight. We've got Jai Apatai, we've got Joe Caldina on the card as well. And, you know, I, I, I've got to say, and I think you will echo this, I love the place. Like, I really enjoy being out there. I don't know. I'm presuming you had a great week as well. It's just, it's just a great feeling out there. And I know that Saudi Arabia gets a lot of criticism all round, but we've seen it firsthand, haven't we? Like, how many times we've been there? Four or five. And it, it just gets better every time. Like Boulevard World, Boulevard City. I don't use it. It blows my mind. The yeah, whole place. I'm a fan of, um, of Saudi Arabia. It's my eighth time there, by the way. Is it? Yeah. And it's, you know, people say, oh, it's what. Experience it for yourself. Weather, hotels, hospitality, restaurants, entertainment, attractions, everything. What What more do you want? Right. It's easy for you to say, though, when you're flying first class in your silk pyjamas to Saudi. Just thought I'd point that out. What, does the weather change for me, does it? No. Does the hospitality and the restaurants and, yeah. and the entertainment? Yeah. Well, no. yeah. yeah, when Eddie Hearn's going to these places, absolutely, yeah. I'm going to Boulevard World, Boulevard City, just like you were. Just oh, like every tourist was. Actually, you give me a lift one day. Respect. Well, why are you piping up then? You I'm, not, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not trying to burst your unburstable bubble. Um, That's quite trying, is it? Um, just post-fight reaction to that. Tyson Fury sat front row. Um, said that Joshua would knock him out in a round or it was two rounds. Applauded. I mean, did Fury do anything wrong in that situation? Kind of. Oh, I've got. To, I've got to be honest with you. So that's hanging around with him. But I, I always enjoy Tyson Fury's company, honestly. And it was really like I really enjoyed being around him last week. We were at His Excellency's house with the other fighters, and then again for dinner, like me, Spencer, Frank, George, Tyson, His Excellency having dinner. He's he's got great company. He's a great fighter. When I say that I believe AJ would beat him, it's not meant out of disrespect. It's just on, honest from the heart. That's my honest opinion. Um him, Frank, Spencer, they would have all sat there. Well they all know how impressed they were. And they would have all gone Wow. Doesn't mean they don't think Tyson Fury doesn't beat AJ. They think he does. But the opinions shifted massively in the last, particularly the last two fights. And everybody knows it is the biggest fight, not just in boxing, maybe in the history of the sport. That fight is a monster. And I really hope, as much as I love Usyk and Alex and the team, I hope Fury beats uh, Usyk because you've got just a monster. It's not going to be easy for him. At all. It's just, but the good it's thing, I feel, like this is, I feel like this is good timing for Tyson Fury because his back's against the wall a little bit. You know, a little bit of criticism from the pullout, some silly nonsense stories about fake injury. AJ looking devastating. I think he'll beat Tyson Fury. And that's when Fury's at his best, when, it, when it's a little bit on top. So I do think he's going to go into his camp train really, really hard. And I think you'll get the best Tyson Fury possible on May the 18th. Just want to pick up on a couple of comments Joshua made after the fight when he was asked about Tyson Fury. This is immediately after the win. Uh, didn't really want to talk about him. Um, Joshua said he heard a couple of comments that Fury had made about why he was in Saudi Arabia commentating on a couple of sausages, which is yeah. Fury-esque, but... He seemed like he didn't really want to engage in conversation. This was immediately after the fight about Tyson Fury on Friday night. I don't think Fury really wanted to talk about Joshua either, if, if you know, if that's the truth. Like, you know, when Fury says, oh, I'm just here to comment out on a couple of sausages, some people might find that a bit offensive. Like, why, why would you want to speak positively about someone saying stuff like that? Others, like, 
for me, that's just what you'd expect from Tyson Fury. But it doesn't mean you you got to be happy with what he said. So I don't know. Fury says a lot about AJ. He's giving him a lot of stick. But I think he respects the performances, especially as of late. Like Tyson Fury knows he's boxing. He knows that AJ's on on point right now. Um, but yeah, I think I think those two respect each other in a weird kind of way. You know, definitely. Five v five. Where's the announcement? So we filmed it. Film what? We filmed the weight announcement. Okay. With and the is in it? No, that's not being released to the press conference, as you know. Yeah. So the filming is with uh, His Excellency, and it will be dropped in due course regarding the weight categories for the tournament. So right now, I know the weight categories for the tournament. Okay. It's been filmed. It's been announced. And it will drop, I, I guess, oh, I mean, I'm pretty sure. I don't want to say because people keep, I keep saying it'll be dropping on Saturday and everyone starts messaging me and where, where is it? Where is it? So it's imminent. It has been filmed. The weights have been selected and you'll hear about it in due course. Okay. One question about it. Is there only one weight class on each one, if that makes sense? Like Maybe. it's got two heavyweights. What? Maybe. Anything's possible. You can answer that one, surely. No, because I'm not giving anything away until it's released. No, I'm just saying, is there the same weight class for two of the fights? You will find out when it's released. Jesus. Okay. Um, and a press conference pending. It's going to be, early, it looks like early April. We're just waiting to finalise the dates in London. Every fighter in attendance, maybe even in disguise, until the names are called out. It's quite WWE, this, isn't it? Listen, you've seen the promos, right? Yeah. Expect exactly the same treatment for this. Myself and Mr. Warren will be filming our promo in due course. Okay. So, Better BF and Bivol, does that headline it or does the 5v5 headline it? No, better be a be, better be a be, 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 was the final okay. fight on the card. So if Connor Ben and Pacquiao goes on the card, where does that fit in there? Potentially on the five v five. Depends if Frank can go in and uh, sign Manny Pacquiao. What what's going on with the, the Pacquiao and Ben thing? I, I mean look, we all want to make that fight. Obviously Manny flew in. For, for talks and, and to, to watch the show in Saudi. So that's what we'd like to do. Um, we are waiting for the Conor Ben announcement from the appeal. I think we were told within two weeks. It's now nearly four weeks. So any day we, we'll be getting the result of that appeal. It's not in our hands. It's you know in, in the uh, hands of the, the panel. Um, and that will determine where Conor's next fight will be because... Quite frankly, we could do Pacquiao v Conor Ben in a stadium in London. So it's a fight I like. Um, people say, oh, he's not the Manny Pacquiao of old. Thank God for that. Um, he's an eight division world champion. I think it's a 50-50 fight at this stage, to be honest. Manny Pacquiao would easily beat everybody that uh, he's ever beat. Um, so yeah I like the fight Will you hear news of Connor's hearing this week? As I just said to you if you ever listen we were told that we'd get it within two weeks um, Yeah I did listen to that but I'm saying do you expect to have it this week? Yes That's all you had to say that's but then, but then this is what happens, and then it, like we don't get it this week. Hearn <laughs> said he expects to get it this week, bastard. Um, Crawford Eubank Junior. Do you like yeah. it? Or not? Yeah, but what is what is that? 
What? It's unbelievable. I saw a pig flying across the, the come through the sky through my through my office. Unbelievable. Next question. You don't feel happy. Oh my god. What? Next question. I don't, it's not that insane for it not to happen, is it? It's the fight ain't happening. It? Okay. There's no money in the fight. It's the fight Eubank can't win. They've got the same trainer. I mean, what else do you want? All right. This will be played back if it does happen, but anyway. Crawford against Madrimov. If Terence wants to step up and have a little quick little fight for a 154-pound title. That we're open to. Yeah, I would say there's more realistic chance of you bank Crawford happening than Madrimov and Crawford. Just my opinion. Really? Yeah. Luckily, your opinion means absolutely nothing. Well, we'll see. All right. Play this back then in a few weeks. <laughs> Eddie, what is going on with Chantel Cameron? Uh, did an interview over the other day regarding her situation with Katie Taylor. She said, like, she's ready to go. Like, she's accepting less money. Um, she doesn't believe that Taylor or a team want the fight. Um, the fight... That date you've got in May is like 10 weeks out. Um, you've said yourself she hasn't priced herself out. So what is the actual issue here? I don't think, just because someone hasn't priced themselves out, in my opinion, it doesn't mean that all the numbers necessarily work. We wanted to go outdoors with that fight to generate more money to make the numbers work and to pay people what they want and what we believe they deserve for that fight. We can't do that in May, okay? We have to go back to the three arena. Automatically, that makes it difficult to happen. But we're trying. But there is a chance that we may fight a mandatory fight in May and look to push Taylor Cameron back, okay? There is no doubt at all, and we should acknowledge this because we just know the person that Katie Taylor will not fight Chantel Cameron. She asked for the trilogy. When we sat down straight after that fight, when we sat down a month later, she says, I want to fight Chantel Cameron again. But also, this is what we think the value of the fight is, etc. The money, Chantel's money, etc. So I'm sure that Katie Taylor v Chantel Cameron will happen. There have been a few preliminary discussions with Amanda Serrano about a trilogy there, whether that's in uh, Dublin, whether that's in America, we'll have to wait and see. That is another fight that will, in my opinion, 100% happen at some point. Then you have Alicia Baumgardner now back in the mix, which again, I think is a fight that has a good chance of happening. But I understand Chantel's frustration, but at the same time, I'm very confident because I know the individual, that fight will happen. Now, Chantel wants that fight to happen in May. Katie would be happy as well, but we have to find a way to make it make it all work. And we haven't given up on that for May, but there is a chance, as I've said a dozen times, that she will fight a mandatory fight in May and then look to fight again in the back end of the summer, potentially outside. So have you had these conversations in reference for Dublin with Croke Park? Yeah. Yeah. You know, we would like an outdoor fight but we can't, in May, it's not happening. So. What yeah. about the Aviva Stadium? Have you Same. been. It, it doesn't work for those dates. Right. So we don't want. The fight was in November. What I don't want to do is go August and then you, you end up boxing twice in a year. Katie would tr like to try and fight three times this year, minimum. So that'll be May, that'll be August, that'll be December. And it will, you know, Chantel is a, is a must fight. Katie Taylor, the trilogy, as is the Serrano rematch at some point. Well, with Chantel Cameron, when I spoke to her the other day, she said she hasn't got a plan B. It's like she's focused on getting that Taylor rematch. Yeah, but that, that's what that's in her mind. She wants revenge. She wants a trilogy. She wants her world titles back. But if that fight's not there, she would also have another fight. Yeah, who would she fight? Who could she potentially fight? I mean, there's a lot of people. You know, she could move up and fight the winner of Terry Harper against uh, Sandy Ryan, Ryan for the world to weight title. Yeah. You know, she could move up and she could fight another champion. Um, she could fight 
I should you fight Alicia Baumgartner. I, don't, I mean, there are loads of fights for her as well, but it all depends. We need to, this is not a case of getting a, a Katie Taylor plan just for May. This is locking up her plan for the rest of the year and doing that alongside Chantel Cameron. So um, we're, we continue discussions with, with Chantel Cameron's team. As I said, we look at the Amanda Serrano fight as well for 2024. That won't be in May. Um, but she will have three fights this year, Katie Taylor. Okay. Um, just a couple of other things before I let you go, Edward. Um, Dillian White is actually making his return to the ring, yeah. which I'm sure you've seen against Christian Hammer in Ireland this week. Yeah, it's a, a bit random. But... Yeah, very random and a fast one. But, you know, he's obviously been training and he had the decision. Um, so he'll be looking to get back into action. And, yeah, I guess smash up Christian Hammer and then try and get himself in the frame for a big fight internationally. Have you spoke to him at all, or his team? No. No. But yeah, I'm assuming just obviously just he's been out of the ring for a while since the um, the Fury. Yeah, you know, a lot of people would be obviously he's not going to get be getting paid, so a lot of people would want to wait. And you know, I'm sure, he spent a lot of money on his legal fees and uh, just get a massive payday. But it's actually good to get back in and. You know, stay active and, and get that win and, and uh, because once he has that fight he will be ready I'm sure to fight anybody Just coming back to Joshua um, when do you start kind of planning what's going to happen with him regarding I mean Hergovic etc I'm assuming you're not just going to wait about for potential two fights there with Fury and Usyk which is going to take up the year probably No I mean Josh wants to be active Really, but at the same time, he has boxed four times in 11 months. So at some point, you know, going back to the gym ASAP, the body starts breaking down, you pick up little injuries. But, you know, he did two rounds, but he had another long camp. So I think in his mind, as always is the way when you finish your fight, you're ready. You want to get straight back in there, you know, get back into camp. But we'll sit down with Freddie and AJ and a team and, and plan out what's next. You know, he won't fight before... I don't know. I don't, I don't see him fighting before the end of June. So does he fight in July, August? Then again in November, December? Yes. Yes, do that. I think, I think May the 18th will tell us a lot about the plans of Anthony Joshua. Um, Canelo. Munguia announced May the 4th. Yeah. So, yeah, it didn't quite happen for you. No, but it's on the zone, which is great. Um, obviously, he has that contract with PBC. They made him an offer. Um, by all accounts, bigger than our offer. Um, and, you know, we just worked to try to, you know, obviously we'd have loved to have done the fight, but obviously with a contract with the PBC. But with the exclusive exclusivity with the zone, of Jaime Munguia it worked out really well for Dazone so I'm happy would have much rather been promoting the event but I love the fight I think it's a great fight I think it's a good fight for Saul I think he'll win in style and then hopefully we can talk to him about working together I think it's been announced now this is a one fight or the a new one fight deal if you like with PBC so this will be the last one and after May 4th he'll be a free agent and we'd love to see if we can get him on board do you think you'll still end up working with him at some point? I will, I will definitely do another Sal Canelo Alvarez fight in his career, whether that's September or not. All, as I've always said to you, like we get on really well, but he will always take the biggest deal or what he feels is the best deal for him. Um, and with his current contract and everything, this was a good fight for him. And, and again, like I said, the zone get action, so all makes sense. Did you hear Drake bet six hundred and fifteen thousand dollars on Engano to beat Joshua? I, know. I could have told him that was a bad bet. Like even if you've got money, like you're in the same money class as Drake, obviously. But even if you've got that money, it's a lump of money to lose on a bet, isn't it? Yeah, he's won a few, isn't he? You see him post a few. He's won a few mil. But that was a wild bet on Engano. To be fair. Um, what's that? 
Going to the gym. Anything else? Not really. Uh, I spoke to you the other day about Tyson and Mike Tyson and Jake Paul. You're like... I don't want to be like... I'm. You know me. And listen, my opinions on Nganu Fury didn't make me very popular. Um, and again, my, my opinions on Jake Paul against Tyson Fury might not make me very popular with people. But I'm also not going to lie to you and say, oh, yeah, I get... The best way I can describe it is it's a big event. I get it, right? People are going to want to tune in. Casuals are going to be fascinated. Jake Paul does a great job. But you can't just expect me to conform. And like I saw, I heard Nikita's, oh, Eddie Hearn's just a hater. He's, why is he talking about other shows? Well, guess what? Because I get asked about it. What do you want me to do? Just say, I'm not talking about that. I'm just going to give you my opinion. Wild, freaky, wacky, Big show, big interest. You can build a really good storyline. I don't, I don't, I'm not a hater. I'm just telling you as a hardcore fight fan, I find it very sad that one of my all-time great heroes and Thank legends you. of the sport has to fight at 58 against a YouTuber who, who will probably beat him. And it's it, like, but it doesn't mean I won't tune in at some point. I won't watch a press conference. I won't engage because I do, because I get it. But I'm di- like I'm one of the hardcore lot that we always talk about, and there's no way that any fight fan is a fan of that fight. But people will watch it, and that is the name of their game. So it is what it is. It is what it is. That's what Joshua said, wasn't it? The other day. It well, I said it, yeah. I don't know. Okay, Edward. All right. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you for your time. Don't forget it- now. Don't forget, March 23rd, which is a week on Saturday, we have a banging show in Sheffield. I'm there. It's a big night, big crowd. Dalton Smith, Zapita, Sandy Ryan against Terry Harper. Campbell Hatton's in a really tough fight. You've got Troy Williamson, Troy Williamson against Ishmael Davis. Great fight. Um, other great fight as well. Anyway, March 23rd. Don't miss it. Live on the zone. We'll catch up before then, old boy. See you soon. Definitely. Edward, thank you very much. We'll see you in Sheffield. Wall Street Memes Casino. I'm fine. And Sportsbook.